guys. Um, GVM reality versus marketing. So this is part one, and what we want to talk about is axle loading. Okay, so under the GVM requirements, if you want to increase a GVM on a car, all the states, territories, the federals, they all accept you to be able to do a GVM. Now, the limitation on how far you go with a GVM is based on engineering. So where, how far can you go? So we'll use a, a 70 series as, a, as an example. So from a factory, a 70 series Toyota has a GVM of 3.3 tonne. So if you go to the axle load, the maximum axle load limitation on the back of a 79 and the front, they give you some safety margin. So they allow you to bring that car from Toyota, from the manufacturer up to 3780 kilos. So, which is an increase from 3.3 tonne to 3.78. That's all working within the safety margins that the manufacturer has stated. Ram, not too much different. Uh, they also have a, I think in the US, they're 3.1 tonne on the DS model. Um, they have a maximum axle load rating of uh, 3530, uh, I think it is. So they're giving you this allowance. So bringing a GVM in that space up to the factory axle load capacity is with just suspension is fine. And as long as it's tested and engineered, obviously they do brake tests and, and they do uh, maneuvering tests, etc., to ensure that it's going to be safe. However, if you want to step over that rating, then you need to look at doing work. So some manufacturers uh, take it upon themselves with evidence that they um, can re-rate that axle to go higher. Whilst that's a common practice in the industry, there is a lot of scrutiny over the re-rating of axles. Um, some of the uh, state legislation coming out, um, they're stating that it's only the manufacturer of the axle that can turn around and say, we will allow you to increase that rating under Australian conditions. So to give that some perspective, uh, Toyota say to you, your rear axle is rated at 2,300 kilos, maximum from us. If you got a letter from Toyota saying that, hey, under Australian conditions, we're gonna allow you to raise that to 2,500 kilos, that would be acceptable. But for another company who is not the manufacturer of the part to re-rate it, they're using uh, computer generated evidence, et cetera, to verify what they're doing. And that's what's coming under scrutiny. So the reality of it is the upgrading of axles and things is, is, is definitely has its place in the GVM space. Um, I suppose to understand what needs upgrading in an axle is, is things like um, diff braces. You know, so a lot of companies will weld a diff brace to a housing. That increases the strength of a housing to a point definitely a methodology of strengthening a housing. However, as you keep going through the process, you strengthen one part, you need to strengthen the other. A uh, classic example on a 70 series housing, the spindle end that goes into the diff only sits just inside the tube. Whilst bracing will create a certain amount of strength, it won't strengthen that part because you've stiffened everything else, that's the next fail part. So, you know, having spindles that go right down inside the tubes um, make a difference as well. The other big one is wheel bearings. So there's no point having an axle load rating that's really, really high and wheel bearings that can't cope with the work. So on our Land Cruiser, as an example, perfect example of a good system for a GVM upgrade because it has a floating hub. So the hub is full floating and it has two wheel bearings in it. So the two wheel bearings are actually spaced apart and they're large, um, bearings so they have the ability to carry quite a lot of load so they're built basically um, in that truck format of something for heavy load carrying the ram 2500 has a very similar system where they have a full floating hub now the downfall of something like a ram 1500 it has a very very small wheel bearing and the bearing is a single bearing runs directly onto the axle so it runs hard onto the axle. It runs in a very, very thin walled section. So whilst putting a brace on a ram diff might seem like a great idea, you've got a limitation that comes in in your wheel bearings. So for example, on our Ram 1500 variant, what we do, here's a sample tube that we've done. We strengthen the whole tube, but we also put full floating hubs on it 
where we run double tapered bearings. So same principle as a 79, but what it allows us to do is to take an axle load up high enough that um, I think the one on our Ram is about 2,500 kilos, but it addresses all of the issues. So when it comes to re-rating, re-rating is one of those things where the manufacturer say, we've got a lot of second stage manufacturers, they own the liability. However, from an engineering perspective, if you're over and above the factory axle load rating specified by the guy that actually makes it, then you know that's what's coming under scrutiny. And then as you go through, it's easy to go, oh, well, we'll just throw a brace under it or we'll do this. But your limitations, you've got to follow your limitations and address the whole issue. So um, right back to wheel studs, all those sorts of things. So that's what's really important. The other thing that we've seen in the industry of recent is leapfrogging for marketing. So, for example, you know, someone will go, well, I've got an axle and it's rated at 3,000 kilos. The next guy will come, well, I've made one and it's 3,020. Next guy's on 3,150 and it just keeps going. And it's getting to the point where it's purely marketing, nothing else. So to give you an example of why it's marketing, so on our 3,000 kilo rated axle for our 79 series, when you get our GBM, your axle load rating will be somewhere between 27 and 2850. And people will go, why, why are you telling us it's three ton, but you're only giving us that on that model or that GBM. So on a six by six, we give them the full three ton. The reason is, and I'll go into this in another part about practical loading. The reality of it is just having the highest axle rating means nothing. It's all about how the GBM package is put together it's not about numbers. So we'll go through um, the next part, but um, stay tuned for our, our next part in that series.